Hello, my loves. Today, we are going to continue talking about tectonic shifts. So remember in yesterday's video, we were talking about how those plates could kind of move apart and move together. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about specifically how earthquakes happen, how mountain ranges happen, and how we can get some of that new, um, that new crust to form. So here at the National Ocean Service, um, this is a United States government website, so we know that it is a reliable source. Remember, don't go to a page that says, like, you know, Bob's page on tectonic plates, because you don't know who Bob is, and you don't know if he knows his stuff. But here, when we're talking about the, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, eh, we can trust them. So what is tectonic shift? Tectonic shift is the movement of the plates that make up Earth's crust. So the Earth is made up of roughly a dozen major plates and several minor plates. So a major plate would be a, a large piece of, uh, of tectonic plate, right? And you can see here on this map, they're showing you earthquake activity with those yellow dots. Let's see. You see those yellow dots? Look at all these yellow dots. That's where all those earthquakes are happening. And then you can see here where it says convergent. Convergent means when two plates are like squishing together. To converge means to combine, to like group together. And teeth, you see these little, these little teeth right here? They're on the overriding plate. So it's kind of part of that goes on top of the other plate. Because remember, one plate goes underneath and it starts to melt again. And let's see if we can find those convergent plates. Oh, here we go. You see how the teeth are sticking out this way? That means those are the ones that are engulfing the other tectonic plate. See how they're going this way? Wow. And then we've got divergent boundaries and transform boundaries. So convergent means to go together. Divergent means to spread apart. And we talk about that in the classroom where we do like divergent thinking activities, divergent art. Divergent means like thinking outside of the box, but it also means going away from something. We're divergent thinking, which means we're thinking away from how everybody else thinks. That's what it means to be outside the box, to think differently, to think in a different uh, direction than everybody else. And then we've got those transform. Transform is when they rub together, kind of like left and right, they grind together. And that's where we're going to get a lot of that earthquake activity. <coughs> Pardon me. So the earth is in a constant state of change. Earth's crust called the lithosphere, remember lithos, that is Greek for stone, it consists of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. The plates can be thought of like pieces of a cracked shell that rest on hot molten rock of the Earth's mantle, and they fit snugly against one another. The heat from the radioactive processes within the plant's interior, so that core, causes the plates to move, and sometimes toward each other and sometimes away from each other. The movement is called plate motion, or tectonic shift. Our planet looks very different from the way it did 250 million years ago, when there was only one continent called Pangaea. Just one continent. <clears throat> and then there was only one ocean called Panthalassa. As Earth's mantle heated and cooled over many millennia, the outer, the outer crust broke up, and then that plate motion that started then continues today. The huge continent of Pangaea eventually broke apart and it created new land masses and oceans and they're always changing. Have you ever noticed how the east coast of South America looks like it would fit neatly into the west coast of Africa? That's because it did. Millions of years ago, before tectonic shifts separated the great continents, they were together in one. So they do actually fit like puzzle pieces. Earth's land masses move toward and away from each other at an average rate of about uh, six-tenths inch a year, or like half an inch a year. 
That's about the rate that human toenails grow. Well, that's cool. Some regions, such as coastal California, move quite fast in geological terms, almost two inches a year. And that's why they tend to get a lot of those earthquakes and things like that. And, um, and those are at the seams where tectonic plates contact. You get crustal rocks that grind violently causing earthquakes, and you also get volcano eruptions. And we get that over um, a little bit west of California in Hawaii. All right, so let's look here at another government website, USGS, the United States Geological Survey. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Pangaea, okay? So from about 280 to 230 million years ago, the continent we know now as North America was connected to Africa, South America, and Europe. Everything was connected. They all existed in a single continent called Pangaea. Pangaea first began to, tor to, to be torn apart when a three-pronged fissure grew between Africa, South America, and North America. So that fissure is where the land masses start to pull apart, right, at the divergent boundaries. Rifting began as magma welled up through the weakness in the crust, and it created a volcanic rift zone. Volcanic eruptions spewed ash and volcanic debris across the landscape as these severed continent-sized fragments of Pangaea diverged. Remember, diverge means to float apart, to push apart. The gash between the spreading continents gradually grew to form new ocean basin, the Atlantic. The rift zone, known as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, continued to provide the raw volcanic material for the expanding ocean basin. So it's still happening, it's still pushing, pushing, pushing. Meanwhile, North America was slowly pushed west, away from the rift zone. The thick continental crust that made up the new east coast collapsed into a series of down-dropping fault blocks that roughly paralleled today's coastline. So as new land is being created, old land can be dropping off. At first, the hot, faulted edge of the continent was high. And as the North America moved away from the rift zone, it began to cool and subside beneath the ocean. And then this once active divergent plate boundary became passive. So it became calm and it wasn't creating any new, um, um, any new land masses. All right, let's go to this one. I'm so excited to share this with you because now we've got some really awesome illustrations. So here on National Geographic, plate tectonics, the Earth's plates jostle about in fits and starts that are punctuated with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. When they say fits and bouts, they mean like really um, quick moving actions. So that's what it means to be have a fit or have a start, like to start and stop. Mm -hmm. There are a few handfuls of major plates and dozens of smaller or minor plates. Six of the majors are named for the continents embedded within them. So remember the continents themselves are not the plates. The continents are sitting on top of those plates, such as North American, African, Antarctic plates. Though smaller in size, those minor plates are no less important when it comes to shaping the Earth. <gasps> Look, the tiny Juan de Fuca plate. We just saw that, and I said, who on Earth is Juan de Fuca? Juan de Fuca plate is largely responsible for the volcanoes that dot the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Wow, so the Northwest of the United States. We're talking about up there in, um, like, Washington State volcanoes over there. The plates that make up the Earth's outer shell is called the, yeah, the lithosphere. And this includes the crust and the uppermost part of the mantle. Because that uppermost part of the mantle, it's not really hot and molten, but it's not really cool and crumbly. It's more of that, that um, pliable 
uh, type mantle. So that's part of the lithosphere. Churning currents in the molten rocks below propel them along like a jumble of conveyor belts in disrepair. This is amazing writing. Do you guys picture what's happening? All of these highly descriptive words are really putting some images in my mind. Most geologic activity stems from the interplay where the plates meet or divide. So most of our, our activity of the earth happens where plates meet together, they either diverge or uh, they converge and then they come apart. And then sometimes when they rub together, they scrape together. The movement of the plates create three types of tectonic boundaries. Here's those three. Convergent, where plates move into one another. Divergent, where they move apart. And transform, where they move sideways along each other. And they move at a rate of one to two inches per year. So here's convergent. Where plates serving landmasses collide, the crust crumbles and buckles into mountain ranges. India and Asia crashed about 55 million years ago, and they slowly gave rise to the Himalaya Mountains, which is the largest mountain system on Earth. As the mashup continues, the mountains get higher and higher. Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth, maybe a tiny bit taller tomorrow than it is today. <gasps> so if any of you explorers go to climb Mount Everest as an adult, then the Mount Everest that you're climbing is taller than the people who are climbing it today. So that's something to be really proud about. These convergent boundaries also occur where a plate of ocean dives in a process called subduction, and it's under a landmass. So remember, we talked about those. There's um, the oceanic plates, right? And then the continental plates. So those oceanic plates, when they converge, the overlying plate lifts up, and it also makes mountain ranges. And then the diving plate that goes underneath, it melts, and it's often spewed out in volcanic eruptions such as those that are formed, that, so sorry, such as those that formed some of the mountains in the Andes of South America. At ocean to ocean convergences, when remember those things, the, those plates are converging in the ocean, one plate usually goes underneath the other and it forms a deep trench like the Mariana Trench in the North Pacific Ocean, which is the deepest point on Earth. And these types of collisions can also lead to underwater volcanoes that eventually build up into island arcs like Japan. <gasps> so Japan is created from volcanoes in the ocean. How amazing is that? So that tells us that Japan was not part of Pangaea. Japan is pretty new. Now we've got divergent boundaries where they split apart. At divergent boundaries in the oceans, magma from deep in the Earth's mantle rises toward the surface and pushes apart two or more plates. Mountains and volcanoes rise along the seam. The process renews the ocean floor and widens the giant basins. A single mid-ocean ridge system connects the world's oceans, making the ridge the longest mountain range in the world. Now, differently on land, giant, giant troughs such as the Great Rift Valley in Africa form when plates are tugged apart. If the plates there continue to diverge millions of years from now, Eastern Africa will split away from the continent and form a new landmass. So that's really, really cool. And the mid-ocean ridge would then mark the boundary between the plates. And now we have transform boundaries. The San Andreas Fault in California is an example of a transform boundary where two plates grind past each other along what are called strike slip faults. These boundaries don't produce spectacular features like mountains or oceans, but the halting motion often triggers large earthquakes 
such as the 1906 one that devastated San Francisco. Let's go back up to the top because we've got a slideshow here. 13 pictures that can show all the different types of faults. So here, lava spews out of a fissure in the Virunga Mountains in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The Virunga chain is part of the East African Rift Valley system, which marks the boundary between two plates, the Nubian plate to the west and the Somalian plate to the east. The Rift Valley is a classic example of a divergent plate boundary. So this is a classic example where here's one plate going this way and here's the other plate moving that way. And when they split across or split apart, then you've got the magma coming up and then that magma is going to cool. All right, so here's some hot lava in Mount Etna. A river of molten lava flows through a channel in hardened lava after an eruption at Mount Etna in Sicily, Italy. Mount Etna is one of Europe's most active volcanoes, and it was created by the subduction of part of the northward moving African plate beneath the Eurasian plate. So remember subduction means one plate gets kind of squished underneath another, and that's how we're getting um, uh, a volcano. Okay, this is Thingvellir National Park in Iceland. <gasps> look, those are people, look how tall that rock wall is. Hikers walk in the shadow of cliffs in Iceland's Thingvellir National Park. The divergent mid-Atlantic ridge rises above sea level at Thingvellir, with the North American plate to the west and the Eurasian plate to the east. Wow, so they're literally walking between two plates where that magma has cooled. All right, these are called offset streams. I don't know what that is. Let's find out. Offset streams cut into the Carrizo Plain along the San Andreas Fault in California. This fault, which runs more than 700 miles, is the boundary between the Pacific and North American tectonic plates. The stretch of the fault that runs through Carrizo Plain is very well defined because the land is arid and the fault has not been significantly eroded. So it's arid, so there's not really any kind of plants that would hide it. And it hasn't been significantly eroded, so we don't have a lot of wind or things that could break it down. So we can clearly see this fault. This is where those plates are connected. Wow. All right, we've got Rapley Ridge, Utah. Rapley Ridge, which is part of the monument uprap, I'm sorry, upwarp in the southeast in the southeastern Utah, is a long, narrow, folded anticline that formed about 70 million to 50 million years ago. Look at this! Look, you could be canoeing in here or kayaking. Look at this! Can you imagine? This would be like something to slide down in the winter. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at these ripples. So we have here, you can see that the, um, the river was bigger and it was kind of cutting into it. So we've got some um, erosion happening. We've got weathering and erosion, right? Weathering breaks it down and erosion washes it away. Look at this. Look, you can walk along here. Oh my gosh, I want to visit this. This is amazing. Oh, look at this. This is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. An eel pout fish, all, oh, swims near tube worms. Those are tube worms at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in the Atlantic Ocean. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is an example of a divergent plate boundary and is an area where new seafloor is being created. So even though there's new seafloor, I mean, we've got um, animals coming to live in that new seafloor. That's really neat. Black smokers. 
A cloud of hydrothermal fluids stream from a black smoker or a mineral chimney along the mid-ocean ridge off the west coast of Mexico. Black smokers are common to spreading zones in plate boundaries. Chimneys are made out of lead, iron, manganese, and zinc sulfides through which spew superheated ocean water. They also harbor exotic life forms far beneath the reach of sunlight. Wow, I wonder what kind of animals live there. Here we have the Andes Mountains. Sunrise warms the icy southern end of the Andes during a rare break in the weather in Chile's Torres del Paine National Park. The Andes Mountains, which span the entire western coast of South America, forms when the Nazca Plate subducted under the South American Plate. So when one plate went under the other, it kind of pushed up. Wow, so that's how we got those mountains. Ooh, here's the, the Dalal Volcano in Ethiopia. Look at that. Oh, you know what? This is really cool. So those of you who play video games, this kind of stuff looks familiar because a lot of the artists who are creating those video games, they get inspiration from all over the planet. So I have definitely had my character run through land that looks like this. And now I know it's the volcano in Ethiopia. Sulfur, salt, and other minerals cover the crater of Dalal Volcano part of the, De the Denakal Depression in Ethiopia. It's hard to say some of these words. I'm probably getting them all wrong. At 157 feet below sea level, Dalal is Earth's lowest land volcano. Oh, wow. So this is all this green. That's from the sulfur. And then we've got probably a lot of rust happening here from iron. My gosh, that's beautiful. Oh, look at this. Oh, look, you can see the airplane that took the photo. You see its shadow? So what is this? An airplane casts a shadow over the red waters of Lake Natron in Tanzania, which is part of the East African Rift Valley. The water's red hue is due to algae that live on salts spewed from nearby volcanoes. The East African Rift Valley system begins in northern Syria and extends across East Africa into Mozambique. Oh, see, I thought this was like pieces of rock, but this is water. <gasps> Golly, it's so beautiful. This is the Persian Gulf plate activity. In the Persian Gulf, two tectonic plates collide. The Arabian plate, which is here, lower left, is running up on the Eurasian plate upper right. Huh. The Persian Gulf right here the top and the Gulf of Oman down here hmm. were once the site of a rift which is a place where two plates pull apart from each other. And the Indian Ocean filled in that gap between the two plates. <gasps> So that's how they got the water in there. However, the process is now reversed. And about 20 million years ago, the Gulf began to close up. The collision of the two continental plates gives Iran its mountainous terrain. Wow, so everything is constantly moving. First it moved apart, let that ocean in, and now it's closing back up. Oh, look at this. What do we have here? Rift, escarpments, Eritrea. We're going to guess that said, right? A mosque dominates the farming villages. This is a mosque. In Adi, I'm sorry, in this rift. <laughs> okay, so it once adjoined the Arabian Peninsula before the Red Sea opened. Oh, wow. And they shifted when the continental crust moved west. Look at all of this. All of this that has been like changes, changing, changing, changing. And it's still changing. I love it. Mountains and a rift can be seen along the San Andreas Fault. Here are those mountains. And you can see here where that rift is. Wow. 
I really want to travel here and see it firsthand. And that would be it. All right, my loves, so much that we've learned about earthquakes and mountain ranges. But hang tight because I'm doing an art project for you and I'm going to videotape it and you're going to see firsthand some shifting of tectonic plates. All right, I'll see you in a few seconds. All right, here we go. Okay, I think I've got my light situation more or less together. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a mantle on my canvas. So what I did is I took some painter's acrylic latex caulk and I mixed it with some latex paint. Can you see my canvas? Okay. I'm just going to kind of globby globby. Yeah, why not? I've never done this before. Ooh, didn't mix that one very good. So this is going to be the first time and I got some on my plate. There we go. Put a little glob here. Put a glob there. And you know what? It would have made a lot of sense to use like red. But you know, I actually, I don't even have any red paint. I don't know why. I don't have a lot of red paint. So I grabbed things that I already have that's kind of close to red. I mean, this is kind of close to red, right? And this one is like a coral color. It's pretty. So you can definitely see where this would mimic the, um, the magma in my asthenosphere. A little dab of there. A little dab of there. Maybe one more. Boop, boop. Okay. And I've got one more. I've got this pretty little pink. Plop. Very close to that coral color, isn't it? Whoop. Such a messy thing, art and science. That's probably why I love it so much. Um, that one's calling out for some color. All right, what do you think? Do you think that looks more or less like a... Uh... Does it look like magma? I don't think it looks like magma. But let's take my... Um, my magma shovel of science. <gasps> I'm in love. Oh my gosh, I'm totally in love with this right now. Can you see the gorgeousness that is my lithosphere? Nope, it's not. It's my asthenosphere. But my lithosphere is going to be just as gorgeous, I'm sure. Okay. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, does it look like hot magma? Look at this. Oh. Okay, so I have here, bloop, my tectonic plates, and they are close together. I think, I think I had this guy here, and I had this guy here. Yes. So this kind of looks like Pangea. Pangea, if you remember, that was when all of the plates were together, all of the continents were together. And what happened was these plates started to shift apart. And remember, we have three types of movement. We have a uh, divergent movement where they go apart. So let's make some divergent movements. And when we get, oh, look at that. Here's another divergent movement. See how they're all separating? And that's what happened to Pangea when we had some divergent movement and they all separated. But there are other types of tectonic movement. We have tectonic movement that are convergent, where instead of going apart, they go together. And sometimes one of those goes underneath, right? And we get those uh, volcanoes. And we also get mountain ranges. So that's convergent, when they converge together. Here's another example of convergent, and look, there's a mountain range that just formed. Wow. Another type of shift with those tectonic plates is that um, the one that we see in California where they rub alongside one another. Do you remember what those are called? They happen at those faults. It's called transform. So when they are together, they move along here. Can you hear it? 
hard to hear. Do you hear the grinding? They grind along one another, and that creates uh, those earthquakes. Absolutely. So here you go with a very super, super messy art project where I showed how the tectonic plates all move while they're sitting on top of that asthenosphere. They're sitting on top of this molten lava. I'll get my lava everywhere. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see what happens when this dries. My molten lava, and you can see where I have some mountain ranges forming. I've got some volcanoes. Oh, look at that. I've got some really awesome stuff happening here. All right, my loves, here's my challenge for you. What kinds of things can you find around your house? Maybe in your kitchen, maybe in your bedroom, your garage, maybe with Play-Doh or with Legos. What can you find to help illustrate how the tectonic plates move? I'm really interested in seeing this. Maybe you could send me a video or you can send some pictures or even maybe step-by-step -step directions. I want to see that. Send it to me in your portfolio and then I'll go ahead and put it on that student page of awesomeness. All right, and I'm gonna get back to you guys when this is all dry. I will show you the final art piece. All right, I love you. This is me waving goodbye. Bye.